All right. Well, first off, I want to thank everybody that has helped organize this special event. It's been a really great couple of days so far. Everyone awake? Yeah, yeah. All right. Excellent. So my original talk was, you know, uh, the future of digital delivery. I was going to have one slide with a question mark on it, and I decided to do a little more than that. So we're going to jump in and kind of see where we go. So the goals of this presentation, I'm not going to read line by line, but you can check it out for yourself. I want to talk a little bit about the state of affairs, where we all are, how we feel about things, share some thoughts and ideas based on what I do and where I see the you know, potentials of what we can do. I want to definitely uh, acknowledge and respect and address the concerns that our clients have about their loud product and at the same time talk about the promise of streaming, things we can do right now, ways that we can affect differences in the market, and the attitude the positive attitude of being the change that we all want to see in the world, because I do believe that there's potential there. And did I miss anything? Yes. All right. Let's jump in. And if people have questions along the way, ask them. You know, we'll do Q&A at the end, but I'm certainly a fan of you know, folks that want to clarify something or speak a little more about something. So where are we at today? Um, we, like I said, we all hate our lives. We're all thinking about going to school and doing another career, and why is it? Because of hypercompression in masters. Um, the challenge that we face, and I think the things that we discuss the most, is the fact that these assets go to every channel. We know that we have multiple channels now. We have the traditional CD, which people are still making, not very much. I still do a few, and not, not the same volume that I used to do, but they happen. Cert in certain markets, actually, the CD is very viable. I work with a Korean label that does reissues for, it and for back catalogs. All they make is CDs, because CDs still sell in those markets. And they're not doing any downloads because they don't sell. And their streaming market isn't that big because that's just how their market works. So the flip side of that is we now have streaming. We've had it for a while, and that is the de facto standard in the States, and I would imagine here, would you say, as well, and in Europe. Is that true, Stefan? Europe is all streaming too? So that gives us a really nice opportunity of creating two assets, and that's what I'm going to talk about. And we've had some big changes this year that actually provide that opportunity. So a lot of my talk is really talking about the opportunities that we all share. And what else do I have here? Yes. The evils, the evils of loudness. It's been going on for a long time. And one of the channel, uh, challenges that we face today, like I said, we do have streaming as this option. But even if you want to introduce a more dynamic master to your clients, how can you present it in a way where they will actually grasp the idea and embrace the idea and want to pay for that uh, secondary master? We look at this third point, what do we have here? Yeah, that's kind of what I was just saying. We don't really have tools right now to do this. We have internal tools in the production side. So at the recording, mixing, and especially at the mastering side, we do have tools to do these kinds of checks, whether it's um, level checks, reference checks, or even streaming-based tests with something like MasterCheck Pro. What we don't have is an easy way to present these, uh, these results to a client. Because the last thing you're going to do is say, hey, man, um, get a DAW. You know, MasterCheck Pro is a really good, uh, it's a really good deal. Download it, install it, take the WAV file I gave you, and run it through all the presets. You know, uh, that's it's not going to fly too fast. All right. What do you think these guys would say? <laughs> Yes, yes, loudness still matters, even in streaming. Has anyone heard this song? Oh man, you gotta hear it. <laughs> I grew up a metal guy, one of my friends turned me on to this, and I was, wow. Any Meshuggah fans in the room? Yeah, yeah? All right, Meshuggah fans, give this a shot, man, because you'll be like, wow, I thought that was crazy when that came out. But it, you know, it's, uh, I, I like it after giving it a few listens. It's, it's, it's up there, man. It's, it's crazy. We're going to come back to that slide. So do artists care about dynamics? Because we, as mastering engineers, we have been 
embracing the apathy of our position more and more each year. And I am not, you know, I am not saying that all of us have a bad attitude because, hey, trust me, I struggle with it too, man. I was telling the folks here in between um, that, last, uh, that last slide we saw with that song. Uh, when my friend turned me on to it, I, um, I said, man, who engineered this thing? So I looked him up and he's a kid over in, um, I don't remember where he was, Belgium, I think. And he shows his, his studio, he shows it. You know, he's not ashamed to show it. And he's doing big work for Century Media, Roadrunner, and it's a bedroom. He has event 2020s. When was the last time you saw a pair of those, man? <laughs> and the fact that I recognized him even better, right? I was like, where's your Mackie 824s, dude? And so he's got a desk in a bedroom against a flat wall, drywall. You can see his closet with his clothes off to the right in the photo of his studio, you know? But um, the reality is that this guy's making big records, right? Now that depressed me, as it does. I'll hit the microphone, that'll sound good, huh? Um, it, it did, it brought me down, man, because I'm always trying to find ways to have a positive attitude, and it brought me down. You know, like it all, I mean, we have those experiences, right? Where we're trying to stay positive, Mandy, right? We're trying to stay positive, and then something happens, and it's like, really? It's getting worse? Damn, there's nothing I can do to change this. And, I, you know, and now, I, I do feel that there's some real positive things that we can do. And uh, but come, finishing off the story about that guy, the, as I was looking through his website, the most interesting thing that I found on his website was he charges more than me, even more depressing. But I raised my rates and no one balked at it. So, because I thought if this guy's charging more than me, what the hell am I doing? So I did raise my rates and it was a good jump, man, and no one balked at it. So it is possible. Uh, granted, I, these are all repeat clients, and, but a lot of new clients that are getting referrals. These guys said you were you know, the man, so what's your rate? New rate, all right. You know, so your reputation and how you're handling your brand, because it is a brand, you are in the people business. That's what this is. You're in the people business. Um, he had two deliverables. He has a streaming deliverable and he has a loud deliverable is what he calls it and they're different rates. The streaming deliver deliverable was even more expensive than his smash deliverable. And his website states how he spends more time on it, he does a lot of work you know, to make sure this thing translates well into this dynamic range market, and here are the bands that have you know, played it, and he has some references that you can listen to on his website. And it, was, it brought my spirits back up, because I thought, man, because again, you know, like we talk about streaming all the time and we jump back into apathy real quick. I'll oh, gain normalization, everyone puts the CD master up there anyway. <sighs> no one cares, what are we gonna do? Um, so seeing this gave me some, uh, you know, some brought back enthusiasm and I really kind of jumped in and I wanna, you know, a lot of my talk is about how we can jump in. Uh, let's see, so do clients care about dynamics? Uh, many of them do. And there was, was it Stereo Mike who presented yesterday and made a really awesome comment that, I, that is also very true. Um, a, it's not for us to decide whether they want dynamics or not because I, there is a very well established mixing engineer that I do records with and when I first worked with him, he gave me the files, I loaded them up, they were smashed, I called him and I said, so what is it that you're looking for? The phrase, don't fuck it up. <laughs> Leave it alone. QA, QC, I don't know who you are, kid. I'm 50, so don't fuck it up. So, yes, sir, you know. You wanna know the punchline to this? He delivered the mixes out of phase. No joke, man, no joke. Now, who wants to call him back? <laughs> I called the artist and, uh, and I said, <laughs> who I'd never met before and is an incredibly famous guitar player. And I was, you know, I was so excited and honored to get this job. And then this thing lands in my lap. And I was like, <laughs> Come on, man, seriously? And um, seriously, so what do I do? I called the artist and I said, uh, 
you know, I, uh, I, uh, I, uh, it went like that for a few minutes. Uh, <laughs> so, spit it out, dude. What's the problem? Um, mixes are out of phase. I don't know what to do. And he said, I'll call him. So he calls him and I get a text back because this is like 2 a.m. from the artist and he says, uh, you know, Mixer says <laughs> you. you <know? laughs> if I can pull it up, he's still in my phone. Because the Android doesn't delete text. I can go back to the, you know, the day I met my, uh, my lady, ironically, you know, and um, we, we did that one day, it was kind of fun. Um, I liked you back then, you know, uh, you know. But um, so, that was a very delicate situation. I didn't want to invert the phase on his stuff because of all the potential problems that I'm doing on something that he should be doing. So, but that's our job as QAQC, as well as all of the other creative stuff that we sometimes get to do. I, I, I got him into a position where he was willing to check Pro Tools, and I got a new set of files without any statements. I just got a download link. There wasn't any like, oh yeah, thanks, or anything. It was just download link, okay, go. But the point of that story is, you know, you can have a positive attitude. There is laughter in this business. And lastly, we don't get to decide every time about, you know, what we're going to do in this job and what, you know, is the artist concerned with dynamics? That artist was not. He was, I trust my engineer. This is the way we do it. So, but let's go to the flip side of that. What if they do care? This is an opportunity and it's been an opportunity and we do try here and there to leverage this opportunity, but you know, if the apathy kicks in, then you, know, you throw your hands up and it's like, oh, nobody cares. And you're losing time, you're losing money, and it's, you know, how do I juggle this? But you know, you're in the passion business, because you know, we're in the people business and we're in the passion business. Like, like Mandy said, you know, we're doing this because we love it. You spend more and more time in the studio, but you love it and you still do it. You know, and uh, you know, I see a therapist who tells me why. You know, I saw an accountant last year, and he goes, he looked at my book. I'm not, this is no. He's like, he's like, what are you doing? <laughs> and I, I, this is I switched accountants, and this was a recommendation from my accountant who was retiring. Go to this guy because he's badass. And the first thing he says, he's looking. And he's seriously, what are you doing? This business does not make money. Every year it gets tighter and tighter for you. And, and I'm like, well, uh, seriously, you're not listening to me. What are you doing? And, and I was just, uh, well, uh, he goes, what else do you like doing? Do that. And, um, <laughs> but you know, here was the interesting thing. I, I took that away and once again, I got really depressed and um, I called my sponsor and said, I'm having a crisis. I feel like using, and uh, that's a joke. And, um, and you know, uh, but it, I called my accountant back and I said, what would the number have to be for me to make it a viable business? You tell me, man. And he said, this is what I want to see. Can you make that happen? So I took it away and I thought, well, how can I make that happen? One way is to look at the market and see how can I raise my rates? It worked. Another way was how can I diversify? And I came back again thinking about this track. There's gotta be a way to make this work, man. This, this streaming product. Because we all have faith that when one day after we all die, um, that someone will figure out how to restore dynamics. And why not do it now? Because um, I do believe it's possible. So how can we do it? Um, and this is, this is my take on it. And so you don't have to agree with me, but I want to share some thoughts and some perspectives on my experience. And I would encourage you to try your own experiments and see what you can come up with. And we're all mastering engineers. We don't have to hide from one another. JP and I were talking about you know, uh, trying to find some common, maybe make a forum uh, that we want to create and keep it positive. So once it starts heading in <laughs> territory, it's to shut it down, keep it positive. And I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding, man. That, that place just doesn't foster good vibes. So if we can make a difference, what can we do? Let's understand the roles that we play uh, as we interface with clients, artists, labels, you name it. Because again, um, it's not always for us to decide, but we are certainly at the liberty to ask clients, are you interested in this? Would you be interested in this? You know, uh, put yourself in the position, like Mandy says, of going the extra mile and helping to educate people and show them new possibilities. Um, and that's, yeah, educate clients, but educate them on their terms. You know, one of the phrases, I'm always trying to look for new language 
that uh, people can react to in a positive way, non-confrontational language, uh, you know, um, speech, as Tor says, you know, this is a lot of psychology. This is a people business. I read a lot of human uh, interaction books. I've taken a couple of courses at Dale Carnegie. You know, there's, uh, uh, there's Toastmasters. I'm sure they have th things like that here overseas. There's meetup.com, and this is all public speaking and you know, like client interaction because you know, networking is where it's at. You know, people is where it's at. But you can learn, you can practice, find effective ways to meet people in a, in a very positive way, build your network, and build confidence that people believe you and they trust you. Um, so educate them, ask them. My phrase that I really love and I found the most success with is, are you familiar with? Question, not do you know? Do you know is a confrontational way to ask a question, but are you familiar with is an inviting way to ask that question. Um, so, and then let, curate an experience for them. And I'm gonna talk about that. This is where I'm talking about audio now. And I'm gonna stop trying to make you laugh. So, cause if, do you want me to stop trying to make you laugh? Okay, good, good. Um, I don't know if, oh, anyway. So, you know, this is what I'm doing now. Curating an experience for the artist, the client, the label, because what I have found I have found this now. If they can feel it, they buy it, man. They want it. And then beyond that, now what you've done is you've opened up um, a box for them because they're like, okay, man, I get it. This is cool, man. So I I'm interested. All right, man, you're interested. Close the sale. You know what I mean? Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, who's seen it, <laughs> right? No, I'm not kidding, man. ABC, always be closing. There's a lot of good value in that movie. Um, and it's hilarious, you know, but it's a great sales movie. But help them with the next steps, you know, be, go beyond Alec Baldwin's role in that film. Be nice. So, and when I say understand your role, there's two sides to this coin. There's our side of the street, which is the engineer, and there's their side of the street, which is the artist, you know, the record label. Um, we could go so far as to say the consumer, because who's the consumer? They're the other side of the street of the artist. So what's our side of the street? Tools, you know, um, technical knowledge, tools. Again, I'll use my example. You're not gonna go through the steps of telling someone to, you know, get a DAW, even a free one, you know, install this, find a crack, maybe distribute it, and you know, just, it's not gonna happen. So it's a very difficult way to try and express something to someone and you have people's attention for a very short amount of time. Their side of the street is experiences. Our side is tools and we create an experience. The result of our work is the experience that the artist hears and the consumer hears, right? So, this is a question I'm gonna ask you all. So in the current state that we are, in the world of engineering, we are curating an experience for people to review our work. I wanna show a hands, how many, well, you know, I wanna ask how you're curating work. How many people use WeTransfer, you know, as a primary way of delivering stuff? Okay, a lot of folks. How many people use Dropbox? All right, and how many people use Google Drive? Okay, how many people use all three? Different situations, okay, great. And myself included, here's the number one thing I hear from folks when I give them a link. Can't you just give me an MP3? Because I want to listen to it now. How many people have that experience when you send them a download link? Wow, I thought it would be more. Okay, but that is the number one request I get because they're in their car, they're at the gym, you know, they're in the ambulance delivering a baby. You know, it doesn't, you don't know what's happening, but they want to listen to it and they want to listen to it now. So, um, you know, the pros of these platforms, you know, we transfer as we know them. You know, we trust them as engineers. Uh, the cons are, you know, it is, it is a very poor user experience. There's just no getting around it, you know, and the reference process is cumbersome. Because if we think about what people are doing, they're downloading what you send them, they're unzipping it, they're copying it to iTunes, you know, Windows Media Player, whatever, they're syncing their device with it, and then they can listen to it. And they get to do that all over when you send them a revision, whether this is mixing or mastering. <coughs> so, uh, I do want to introduce you to a new tool, and yes, I made it with a couple of other guys. It is called Swan. And this is a delivery um, platform for audio engineers specifically, and this addresses both sides of the coin. This is a tool you can use as an audio engineer, and it does more than file delivery, and it delivers an experience to the receiving end, to the artist, to the label, to the engineer, and anybody else they wanna pass this, this link onto. All right? It delivers, if you upload WAVES or AIF, it can do up to 2496, WAVE or AIF, PCM, 
If you are dead set on using Sonic Solutions on Mac OS 7 and deliver split mono, Sound Designer 2 files, we will interleave it for you. <laughs> we will. The developer was, what is this? And I had to, you know, you know well, let's let me get out the Bible of audio engineering and talk about when, you know, the AD stage of, of history of mastering. So we will take this PCM file, we will encode it into a high res 320A C stream and high efficiency level two, it's constant bit rate. And we've tuned this codec. This is, we built this codec from the ground up. This isn't a commercially available codec that we just put some switches on. We worked about a year and a half on the codec alone. We had a network of mixing, recording, mastering engineers help us review and tune this codec. And I also had some trusted artists and record labels, you know, folks that I know also help review and tune the codec from their feedback. So we've had some great reviews in Working Class Audio, Sound on Sound, a couple of other magazines, and they always mention the fidelity of the codec. And that was our goal, was the fidelity of the codec, as well as the user experience. So um, one other thing it does that's not on here is let's say you like making your own encodings. You know, I, I, I make my own MP3s, I have a process, I trust it, cool. If you <coughs> upload a lossy asset to it, we pass it through. Uh, AUG, Vorbis, FLAC, MP3, MP4, M4A, any lossy format, we pass it through. We don't do any transcoding. So if you're sold on your process, no problem, we deliver it. Whatever you upload is whatever is downloaded. We don't include the assets that we encode in the download. The only thing that's in the download is what you upload. You can upload any file like a PDF or a text file or an image file if you also want to deliver it. Uh, and it's just part of the zip file, it's not displayed. This is what we call the player. And this works in a web browser. There's no app, you don't install anything. It works in any browser on any platform on any phone. And, and it's, that's it. Our goal was keep it simple, stupid. You can be on Unix, you can be on Mac OS, Windows, um, you can be on a Chrome phone. It, it doesn't matter. Any browser, we've tested them all, it works. That was the goal. Keep it simple. So, an immediate experience. So, how it works. On the upload stage, does it look like we transfer? Yeah, actually it does. And because as we did surveys, we transfer was the number one tool that people used. And the reason that they liked it so much was because it was easy. And you know, our product obviously has ongoing stages of development, but we wanted to create this base level product to get it off the ground. And we also, as engineers, you know, I built this because I needed a solution. And I got a couple of very trusted partners you know, to help me build this uh, because of their strengths in, in starting a company. And, we as engineers, you know, myself and the other um, engineer that is one of my partners, we're, our number one platform was WeTransfer. So let's take the simplicity of this. Let's expand on it. Um, so yeah, let's get back to that. Looks a lot like WeTransfer. Some of the differences, you'll notice project title, project subtitle. If you think about that player you just saw, that is up in the left-hand corner. So that's your product project title, project subtitle. We take the files and we just pass on the names however you, you, know, you want to name your files. Um, I do date, you know, whatever in my signature at the end. That's my way of doing it. Uh, email to, you can email it to whoever you want. Space, space divided, comma divided, goes anywhere you want. You also get a uh, confirmation email. You also get a confirmation email when people download the files. And this is one of the interesting aspects of this and this is no accident. So we have three download states. On the left, we have download only. You're just using you know, a very similar service, Dropbox, we transfer Google Drive. All it is is first in, first out. I uploaded a file, they can download it. On the receiving end, you get our interface and it says download, that's it. You know, so there you're, you're just controlling, it's basically just a file transfer service. Download and play in the middle is where, again, whatever you upload is what can be downloaded and we now generate the player. So the last mode on the far right is a play only mode. And this, you upload your, your files, it generates the player, and there's no download button on the bottom. Now, what's the point of that? Uh, the original point that I made was I'm working with a new client, and one of the frustrating things that we all deal with is, well, you gotta give them the file so they can listen to it. And well, you know, if you're not taking payment up front, now you're, you're chasing them to get your 20 pounds or $150 or whatever, and that becomes its own time-wasting process. Um, so one of the original purposes of play only was just, yeah, you can listen to it, check it out. You know, do you want a revision? Yes, no. Okay, you want the WAV file? Cool, let's settle up, let's get paid, and you know, you're on about your business. It's, you know, kind of improves your workflow. 
since we started doing beta, the mix engineers that I know were loving it because mix engineers, they have version after version after version after version. And then when they're set, uh, settling up with sending it to mastering, you know, they might be sending version 27 of, you know, song one and version 15 of song two. This allows them to not deliver the final mixes to the client until the client is signed off on everything. I have a number of uh, high profile mixing engineers that are doing it this way because they feel that the fidelity of the player is so, so high that they're confident in the, uh, in the client referencing that. So, which is, you know, it's fantastic. I have a live sound engineer who works with Babyface and he has to do dailies for the, uh, for the band and the, you know, dancers and anyone who's listening to audio. So they're mixing, you know, different stems and then he sends them up through Swan and then everyone can listen to the daily and not have to download it, unpack it, everything, et cetera, et cetera. So there's certainly plenty of uses for play only. And so let's take a look at this guy. Um, on the left, you have the player with the download button. So this is download and play. Uh, over here, you have play only. So you can see you've got the player, but you have, you know, uh, no download button. On the mobile device, even if you have it set to download and play, there's never a download button because why on earth would you be downloading WAV files on a phone? Uh, so it just, you know, helps ease up that experience so no one can even get themselves into trouble that way. Uh, now, if you notice on the right, you'll see streaming and loud. Same track. We visually render the waveform. So we can also show that you have some visual feedback if you have two different masters of the same song, you know, that are at different levels. We're going to talk a little more about that in a second. So this is my take on loudness, you know, because I've been doing this for a long time. And personally speaking, I think loudness is really a byproduct of self-esteem and, and self-worth and peer pressure. Because when someone comes in and they come in with a reference, typically it's my record, you know, well, okay, what are you looking for? Well, uh, you know, one of the very first things they come in with is my record needs to be as loud as this record. So, all right, well, what's driving you to that? Well, I, you know, I can't get it that loud if it's a home release or the engineer's like, you know, man, this is where it has to hit, blah, blah, blah. But it's when you peel back the onion, especially when you start talking about streaming and a not so loud master, man, the fear starts to come forward. That's, that's peer pressure, because the market is putting peer pressure on people to deliver something as hot as something else. That level's crept up. Why is that level crept up? Competition, which creates more peer pressure, which drives more self-esteem issues, and generates more self-worth anxiety within the artist, and you know, everyone involved in the food chain. The record label, you know, I've gotten a, a revision requests from record labels, man, it's not loud enough, you know? Um, I got the keys from Kanye West, was it? I hope no one in this room mastered that. Plus three over zero RMS going between minus three, minus two. I mean, what the f But, you know, this is what they wanted. So I get hip hop guys, you know, at that time they were coming in and make it sound like that. All right, well, we're going to input clip this guy, you know, this guy. We're going to hard edge, you know, uh, no dithering. We're going to truncate it so everything can go over zero, and that's what you wanted. Again, this is delivering what the client wants. So, um, so you can use Swan to, you, you can use it to game match things, right? So you could deliver a streaming master and a loud master and game match them at their RMS. And now they can listen to them one to one, right, within a player interface. So, and I've got a lot of guys that I send things through, you know, to, and they're like, okay. And I will say at the moment, because I've been doing this for a couple of months now, it's pretty new in my process, and I'm always trying to find new ways to differentiate my business, and I'm finding new ways to reach customers, you know, and it's, so I'm, as I'm doing this with people, I'm iterating, okay, what's working, what's not working? What are they hearing, what are they not hearing? When I said earlier in my slide, educate your clients and work with them on their level, you're constantly trying to find new, uh, new ways to communicate with them to steer them into the listening process because I, I forget who it was um, that was, had made a comment about we see things. Was it you, Crispin? We see things, but we don't listen to them. That was a great, great comment because as we know from all the research, people see and hearing is secondary or tertiary, right? But I have found if you steer them in the direction of what to listen for, they hear it. Like I said earlier, if they can feel it, they'll buy it. Because when I had this particular client up and he was, I said, I want to introduce you to this idea, this streaming master. 
And well, what is it? Well, you know, it's, it's different, it's more dynamic. You can also use it on vinyl, so if you cut vinyl, you can take the same asset and move it to vinyl, which is another way I sell it, right? So now you're getting two masters for one, but you're still paying me for the extra one, but I don't actually have to do any additional work to it. Um, so it is, I'm not lying to them, but it, it, they're getting two products for one, and it generates an extra revenue for me. Um, but he's like, I don't really know if I'm hearing the difference. And I said, well, crank it up. Crank it up in your car, man. Crank it up in your headphones, dude. Just crank it up. Don't, you know, crank it up in your laptop. Yeah, man, you might pop it out, but it's, but you know, just listen to it. So he cranked it up in his stereo, in his car, and I said, how was it? What was different for you? And he said, man, the drums, because this song has some big popping tom fills. And when he reaches, you know, the bottom toms, the thing just boom. And then right after that, there's a flam on the snare and cymbals. And so he was like, man, you know, because it hits. And I was also doing some gain ride automation. I use both. I use what the tools are good for. I use in the box. I use analog. I'll sometimes automate things in the box before it goes to analog to solve problems beforehand so that analog can do what it does best. And then maybe on in the box, I typically do my last stage of limiting in the box before I go to digital. Doing it that way also allows me to create this, this dynamic uh, streaming master without having to do completely two passes in all different kinds of setups. But I also do look at doing parallel compression a different way in analog, so I'm doing the same configuration with maybe a few tweaks. But I'm able to do more effective work in small areas to allow the impact to come up. And it's working. People are responding to it. And because from an effect, a time effective way, I am not doubling my workload, I can make it a surcharge, but I don't have to make it a duplication of the cost. So again, diversification of revenue, finding new ways to add value to you. Because guess what, man? Lander is not taking one file and creating two masters out of it. None of these automated mastering tools are doing this. <coughs> This gives you the opportunity to have an additional human interaction, creative, emotional conversation with the artist making a streaming master. Now you're engaged. Now you're having fun. Now you're doing what you wanted to get into in the first place. The passion of music, the passion of what you're doing. You guys feeling it? You guys interested? I'm serious. You guys interested? Show of hands. All right, man. Fan no? no? <laughs> Okay, I didn't see a hand. I'm like, man, you're making me nervous. Um, all right. So, uh, sorry? Okay, great. Um, you know, I got to give somebody a hard time because um, I'm not looking in the mirror at the current state. All right. But uh, so, now, here's another thing that I have ran into, right? Because, again, I'm managing the experience in Swan. It's working really well for me. The codex sounds great you know, uh, all this good stuff. I make it play only in Swan because if they download both of them and they play them, what just happened? Because the loud master is now suddenly louder than the streaming master and you just lost them. So the fact that you can manage this experience in Swan with play only, you keep them engaged. I have also through these experiments noticed that a certain amount of people are like, you know man, it sounds really good in this Swan thing that you're showing me, but What's, what's it really going to sound like when it's online? So I've been thinking about it and I've been trying things and this is working. So I make an MP4 and I've got a one frame movie uh, and I'm doing it in, um, I forget which app, I've tried different applications, I forget which one I'm happiest with because YouTube is going to do a transcoding operation because I, don't, I haven't yet found a MP4 generator that will uh, take a WAV file and, and actually give me a PCM on the output. So you end up with a transcoding operation. But again, that's how most people are gonna do it. So it's a pretty, it's a pretty uh, I would say, viable argument that you're in what's gonna end up happening. And so you put it on YouTube. You've got a loud master, a streaming master. You can make unlisted links just for that artist. Now, you know, whoever, is, you know, whoever has the URL, that's who's gonna have it. Same with the swan URLs, no one's gonna get it. Um, so, this is working because now those people that were skeptical about Swan, they are seeing it in an environment, hearing it in an environment they actually trust, a commercial environment. You know, I don't, I don't know of another uh, platform that I can do, you know, manual uploads. Certainly can't do it in Spotify, you know, or some of the other ones, Pandora, I can't do it. I can do this instantly. And it basically, I have found that it gains the trust of the people who are kind of skeptical about it. Once they are on board, because they're like, yeah, man, I'm really feeling this. 
I just take them right back to this, man. I take them right back to this because now they're on, they're on board, they're engaged. So I don't need to do any more work on YouTube. Does it, how much time does it take me to do this? I've been doing it a lot now, so I've got it down to about, because I just use these frames, I never have to make another picture. And so it takes me about, I don't know, 30 minutes or so to make this sample. And I never have to make the whole record. I just make one song so that they gain that trust. And once they've gained that trust, I go right back to Swan. And we're driving that process here, and they're digging it. So now, once you've got the client on board, you are taking the industry in a positive direction. You are. You're doing what you know, we set out to do, which is we hate the loudness war, so let's make an effort to do something different. Do we have complete control over the audio? No. Like Mandy said, we lost that control quite a while ago. That doesn't mean we can't do the best things that we can do to make an experience for the artist and the listener to be proud of their work. And when things are popping out of the speakers and it's all game normalized to something else, their track has transience, you're feeling it. You know, you can do it. So that raises the question, you know, all right, what about making money off of this thing? You know, as Crispin says, you know, you don't want to be wasting time without making any cash, you know? So, like I said, I do a surcharge, and it uh, gave me this opportunity to do creative pricing. I say, here's your vinyl layout, here's your streaming you know, master for you know, two for one. If they want me to do layouts, 2496, really doesn't take me a whole lot of time. You know, maybe I can take that half hour and put it in somewhere else as a cost. Like, if they want a DDP, I'll do them both together because I'm doing the layout in one place. So I have the basic layout. Maybe I shuffle a track or two around for you know, time spacing on, you know, for a time length on the, on the side A, side B. But you know, I, can, I can cut that down. And this is where it gets really interesting because I've been trying to look into this for a while and the roadblock I have always ran into is digital distribution. For the longest time, you're not gonna be able to manage two assets to different platforms in digital distribution, right? You can't send a streaming master in uh, and then you're, you're, you're fucked. Because if you convince them that this streaming master is, is badass, well then when it goes into the iTunes music store and someone downloads it, you just pissed everybody off because now my track's not as loud as something else. You just lost, big time. So I never even went down that road because I knew that was a losing proposition. But guess what, man? Things have changed. DistroKid now allows you to take two different assets and put it in two different places under your account. You can name it something very similar, but you have to change just a piece of text here and there about the asset. So you can make, um, in, the, uh, in the example of, uh, what do they call, I keep thinking they're you know, a different band name, Human, Humanity's Last Breath. You know, in their example, they have one asset in the iTunes music store and they have a different streaming asset in all of the streaming platforms. So I'm now telling my guys, because I'm helping them in this process. I'm curating the experience for them so they can understand the value, because uh, they're interested. In the States, people are very interested in dynamics, but they don't know necessarily how to listen to them. But they've been told by us that they're better. But how can they understand what better means? So that's where curating the experience for them is leading them to like, fuck yeah, that is better, man, because I feel it and feeling the music is, you get it live, you know? So where is that in the recording process? That's the thing we've been complaining about for over two decades, right? So here it is, man. In digital distribution, you can do it. You can do it, you know? I feel like a South Park episode where the guy drops the mic. Um, and lastly, in this slide, there's further value to you, like I said. This differentiates you from an automated online process. They're not even thinking about this. And even if they do, the creative options that are available to you as an engineer, like I said, I'm playing around with parallel compression a little more on the streaming master. Because as I've been doing my testing, even the gain normalized one, because the background information comes so far forward with hyper compression, even at gain normalization, it still can sound louder, right? Right? So, and that's where you can get yourself into trouble. So, because they're like, well, I don't know, man. The loud one still sounds louder. Well, but how does it feel? Uh, you know, I kind of get what you're saying, but it still sounds louder. You're never going to get past this peer pressure, man. It's never going to happen. And um, as long as people's self-esteem is tied to loudness, we're not going anywhere. So what am I doing? I'm like, how can I do this? I'm looking more at, you know, parallel compression to bring those background elements forward 
and have a trade-off of the transient snap a, you know, a little more parallel compression in that streaming master, and now that differential starts to blur to where now the dynamic punch and impact of the track outweighs this slightly louder version of you know, the, the other one. Because then I tell them, start comparing it to other tunes in your genre on YouTube, which they can do easily in YouTube. Now they really start hearing the difference because you've now got them on board, they're interested, they're listening, and they're like, yes, I get the difference between my songs. Now go listen to other songs. When you got something minus three, normalized to minus 15, and then your stuff comes on, and it's still minus 14, but your transients are snapping, it's a big difference. It's a big difference. And you're making the impact. You're being the change that you want to see in the world, right? And me, as a mastering engineer, that has made me feel much better about my job. Even when I see guys like this guy in his bedroom, which no disrespect to him, but as someone that's been doing recording, mixing, and mastering for almost 20 years, mastering for almost 20 years, you know, recording and mixing before that, and I was a musician, I was signed, I wanted to do it, I've been wanting to be a rock star since I can't even remember. I got signed, I did touring, I lived the dream and went right back to working in a warehouse, so I got into audio engineering thinking I was gonna make some money there, and here I am all this time later not wanting to go back into working in a warehouse. So, you know, we, you try to think of creative things to make money, and this streaming thing is working. So, I encourage you all to take a look at this Swan product. It's free. You have to register to send files. You don't have to register to receive files. We, of course, have a product roadmap that is going to be adding additional features. Our product vision is a, what they call a narrow and deep model. If you look at software products on the, on the market, there's the broad and shallow market, and there's the narrow and deep market. Google Drive, WeTransfer, Dropbox, they're never going to have even this one feature. Why would they? They're serving all markets. Why would they have a, a player on their product? It just doesn't fit their business model. Whereas we, we want to add tons of features that help the workflow and the user experience um, so that we are a narrow and deep market. We want to give myself, who uses this every day, and all of us tools that we can use to not only help us save time, deliver a better product, deliver a better experience you know, for, for our customers. So I encourage you to try it out. And also, I encourage you to try out these streaming ideas. You know, um, you know, like I said, JP and I were talking about getting this uh, forum thing going, and it's a great place for people to share resources. The old school kind of competitive attitude of like, well, I don't want to give away my secrets. You know, um, what, those days have got to be over, man. I mean, if we want to survive as an industry, we need to share information. If we want to get away from the loudness war and try to leverage this idea of streaming that we can leverage, we should share information. I'm happy to. I'm sharing you what I'm doing, you know, right now. You know, if you, anyone has, you know, some questions, reach me personally about some of the EQ and compression ideas I've been doing. I did some really ridiculous um, automation tests trying to figure out if I could fool a gain normalization um, algorithm. And I ended up, because I heard this one thing that was just, what that, what are they doing? And it turned out to be Q3 of 2017, the gain normalization algorithm of YouTube stopped working. So everything that was submitted in, in Q3 of 2017 is completely different. And they never bothered to change it because the view count would change. So you do run into this stuff once in a while that does pop like that. But it's, again, you can have the conversation with the artist. Find me another one in that genre that does that. I haven't been able to have that experience. So I've probably been talking for too long. Um, thank you for listening. Since we don't have time for Q&A, find me outside. I'm here. Thanks. Thanks.